Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today we're going to talk about gouache. What is gouache? Well, gouache is basically opaque watercolor. It can paint very flat and also you can use it similar to watercolor. You can put some water into it and wash it like a watercolor, which I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you the two uses today and show you how you can paint some flowers using it two different versatile ways. If you have any uh, questions, please leave them in the comment box below. Also, please don't forget to check out my acrylic demo channel. Um, you can find it on my homepage. It's called Amazing Art. Um, and I really appreciate all your um, comments and all my beautiful uh, followers here on YouTube. You guys have been so great. And I hope you're staying safe during this crazy time. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with going over materials. Today I am using the Arches Hot Press cotton paper. Um, I felt like this is a good paper to start with. Uh, I would suggest if you don't have a hot press, maybe you could use a Bristol paper because gouache works well on Bristol paper. You can have a tooth and not tooth. You don't need Arches 100% cotton paper. Um, but if you want to have a nice good wash to it, I would suggest having a good quality paper. This is my palette, it's kind of messy, but it actually activates similar to a watercolor because it's water-based. The acrylic gouache does not. It will dry and that's permanent like acrylic and you cannot activate it again with water. Um, I My choice of gouache is Holbein. Um, they're kind of pricey, but the colors are amazing. Uh, they have, they're pretty pricey. So if you have to get something a little cheaper, um, maybe like Winsor Newton, Arola Downey, I think is the name. Um, but I've always used Holbein because the colors are pretty intense. It's a fine quality of gouache. You can use water watercolor brushes for your gouache, but just note that gouache does kind of wreck them a little bit. So you'll burn out your watercolor brushes quickly with gouache. I have my paper towel, my water, and my various brushes. So I'm just going to go and do a simple... Um, Flower. I have basically, I show you the colors I'm going to be using. I'm going to mix all the colors as I go with. I have uh, a leaf green, ultramarine deep. I used permanent green deep, a brilliant orange. And I'll put them in the description box. This is a cobalt turquoise. And the yellow is G526 lemon yellow. You can see this is the new Holbein packaging. This is the Holbein that I used to used to use in the early 2000s, in the late 90s. <laughs> it's been a while, so I, I still had a ton of them. I used to buy them a lot because I used to work with them a lot. But the new ones are like this, the silver. So if you see mine, like, why doesn't it look like that? Because the, the new packaging is this way, the old packaging this way. And they are pricey, like I said, so you might have to start off with some cheaper gouache. So anyway, let's get started. I'm just going to play around with making a flower. I'm just going to grab some of that lemon yellow. You can see that here. A little of this orange. And mix them together. So you mix them together kind of like a watercolor. But, like I've said in the beginning intro, it's more opaque. It's going to paint flat. And I'll give you an example. I painted these fun little flowers last night and see how flat they are. Similar to watercolor, but more flat. So I'm just going to do little dots like so in the center you know like the little center of a flower I'm going to start off with the flower center first I might add in some of that yellow with some of this green and a little bit of orange to make it brown see so I'm mixing it similar to watercolor you see how opaque that yellow is right now but now we're going to take and make a wash with it. So I had some black here and I add some ultramarine here up here and I'm mixing together with a lot of water. So you can take your gouache and add a lot of water to it. I, I always dab my brush on the paper towel. I don't want too much water and sometimes I do. And you're just going to push it like a watercolor. You're going to push it around like this. Just how we've been using watercolors. Now see that's bleeding. But this particular paper has a different type of bleed than the Arches 
cold press. It has a tooth to it. This is a flat paper. And I've always worked with gouache and a flat paper or a tiny tooth to it, which is a Bristol vellum. That just holds it better. So this is not going to bleed the same way we've done where well, you know you put the it does bleed, but it's not going to bleed the same way, especially with the paper and especially with the paint as watercolor. It has a whole different kind of look to it. See, it has a little bit. It's bleeding out a little bit, as you can see here. But it's a little different. So this is why it's, it's kind of fun to actually get this paint because it's very versatile. I remember when I started doing Instagram, I was still using my gouache, not watercolor, and watering it down like watercolors. So here I'm still going to be doing the wash, like I was showing you. So add in some blue, add some more black on this, make it more bluish gray. It's still bleeding because I have a lot of water going here. This is where this uh, Arches Hot Press comes in handy. And Hot Press is also very good if you're not doing watercolors that have bleeds or, or like wash like that. You're doing more intense like botanicals. It's watercolor, but it's very flat, long time layering. So this is drying a little bit. And now we are going to use the gouache, not watered down. So I've got my black and my ultramarine mixed together. With gouache, you want to have, you want to opaque just a little water because you obviously have to move the paint around and not too much. And you'll see how I put in the opaque. So now it's opaque. See, it's not going to bleed like that. And it's going to hold that color pretty intensely. And with the beauty of this, unlike watercolor, you can go on top of that with another color. Obviously you have to wait till it dries, but I will show you that in the in the leaves that I'll make that goes with this flower. So now I'm just adding in. It still has a little wet over here, so it's getting this little bleed, which is fine. Just doing this little jagged, just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna grab some lime green color here. See, it's still wet in consistency. Grab some of that deep green. Mixing this brighter green. A little orange so it dulls it. And you get more of an olive. So, let's put it in this leaf. Let's see what I mean. See how that's really flat right there? Again, it's really flat. Really flat color. And when this dries, we can go on top of that with a dark or a light color. Unlike a watercolor, you're not going to get that same effect. You can't go on top of watercolor that's dark. It's just not gonna it's not gonna work. You can do it with acrylic, you can do it with oil, but you can't do it with watercolor. Just adding some more fun greenery. It's lighter. So I'm going to dry this leaves and come back and show you what I mean. Okay, so this is dry. Now it wasn't super opaque, but it's opaque enough. If you made it much thicker paint, it would have been more opaque. So I'm mixing this, the lime green again, I'm getting it really light, good consistency. Now I'm going to paint on top of that. You see that? You can see the lime green color on top of the green. If you still don't notice it, you can add some white or even yellow to that and make it even lighter. I'll take some yellow. Again, you don't want it too wet. If it's too wet, it's going to work more like a watercolor than wash. So I add some yellow. And now you can see how I changed that up. Same thing here. So now this is this dark blue here. We can take the yellow. You're just adding a little bit of water, not too much, because 
and it becomes translucent. And see, I can go right on top of that navy bluish color. See that? You can't do that with watercolor. Let me zoom in a little more. See how I'm doing the yellow right on top of the navy? You just can't do that. You can do that with acrylic. I can do it on the green leaves, see? Yellow right on the green, and you'll see it. So this is a combination that you can do with the gouache. You can water it down like watercolor, but then use it permanently like paint, like a like a acrylic paint. And you just can't do that at all with watercolor. So it has a lot of versatility. And I was used to using this many moons ago in illustration. And why was gouache a big deal? Because people, whoops, excuse me, would use gouache to do an illustration. It was very flat. And they could make silk screens from the illustration to do for print work. Unlike today, um, a lot of print stuff is digital. Before the digital age of print, you had to actually make screens for each color separation of each color. So what I'm saying is if you wanted to print this flower on fabric or t-shirts or even um, print materials, each color was a different screen and they had to separate them. So imagine if you try to do that with watercolor, it's extremely difficult. You can do so many great things with watercolor today because everything's digital and not the screen. And so gouache was a perfect medium for the screen printing because it was flat and it's easy to make a screen for a flat color. So here I'm adding some dark gouache on top. Of course, like watercolor, you can add dark on top of that, but you can't add the light. So it's that much fun that you can do with the gouache. It's just more versatile. Um, you should try it. It's some of the gouache is pretty pricey, like I said, but the different types of um, designs you can create from it are very exciting. It will not have the same effect as watercolor in so many instances, but it can. Depends on how you use it. So you see how this flower is pretty washy. And I'm adding in, see again, a very loose tone of this purple. And it looks like a watercolor, almost, but it's not. This is all gouache paint. So you get a double use out of it. And But the leaves down here, you see it pretty opaque. You can go in. And it, and it reconstitutes just like watercolor. This palette could be all dried out and all I have to do is add, so this one's dry, this co red color is dry. I'm going to clean my brush, add some water, and voila, just like watercolor, it's activated. I can go make a brown with my red and green. Um, sometimes the colors are not super opaque and how that is is because when you're adding water to it, it's a little translucent. What I've always done in the past when I worked with gouache, you add a touch of white, just a teeny bit, and that's gonna make it really flat. If that's what you're looking for, if you want it to be really flat, and like, why is my gouache not super flat? And that's the reason why it's still, it needs another element to it to make it flatter. So I have that brown, just going in some brown. See, it's nice and flat. And this watercolor brush is a perfect to use with gouache, because it's a wet medium with water. And again, I'm gonna water down. Okay, add some of this turquoise. Water down, I'm just watering the colors down, see that? And see how it looks just like watercolor, only it's not. Making it looks like a, a eucalyptus here. Throwing that in. I'm gonna throw one over here. Now, if you looked at this, you would say, "Oh, looks like a nice watercolor," but it's not. It's squash. 
if I painted it mostly looking like this, then you would realize that was gouache. But right now you don't, you don't even notice it. And that's the beauty of this particular paint. So I really hope you can go out and try it because it's really worth it. Again, the ones that I'm using are very pricey. I actually had sticker shock myself when I went to Dick Blick to go purchase some new water, I mean, new gouache. Some of the colors that I've owned, I still have a lot of, are $22 a tube, US dollars. That's a lot of money for a tiny little tube of paint. And I'm not kidding. So you might want to start off with a really cheaper one. They have a lot of student grade gouache out there. Um, I think Arteza or I think it's Roll Downey that kind of was that has cheaper student grades. See, I'm washing this like a watercolor, but it's not. And then I can go back in and mix up the paint. Thicker, which means it will turn out to be more opaque. And it won't bleed too, so it will bleed a little bit, but it's not going to do that big old bleed that you see if you're putting a paint next to wet paint. So that was pretty wet, that green, and I put this oh, gouache right on top of that. You see how it still holds its line, it's not bleeding. That's because it's thick like acrylic paint, it's not going to do the bleed. So it's a lot of fun to play with. Very versatile. I could do more um, tutorials with gouache. And you should definitely give it a try because I think you would enjoy it. Like I said, see, I'm watering this down and that's bleeding, but it bleeds it differently also because of the paper too. It's a pretty flat paper, has no tooth to it, but it's great to work with for gouache. It's that perfect balance of like the way the paper should feel with the paint. So now that's still wet, but I can try and see and grab my yellow and go on top and see. It's going to bleed. Yeah, see? <laughs> it did bleed because that was really wet. But we can just take that away. I'll use a paper towel this time. Well, actually, it's kind of cool, right? Again, because it's gouache, you can go in, grab some of that paint, just go on top of that. It's a lot of fun. This is just a tutorial and me showing you how to play around with it and not giving you an actually specific design to do, but just to show you how it works. You know, like that. And I could take, like, I can show you. Here's the arches. I'll give you a, um, here's a small piece of the arches cold press. How it will work on this paper. You take the same paint that I was just using. See, it's not going to bleed as much like it was on this paper because it's an opaque watercolor and we get a really thirsty type of paper. But it does have a watercolor look to it. If you see up close. And then you take the opaqueness of the gouache and go on top of it. It's just the flat paper works a lot better in this instance. It's not, see how it's just, it didn't even bleed here at all. It would bleed here. So I wouldn't recommend the cold press. It's just not gonna have the same pretty look as that, as the hot press with the gouache. So you get this more versatile type of paper with this. So you can use watercolor and gouache on the hot press. And it comes out really pretty. And I'm just dabbling here with some paint. 
and colors. Again, water this down. Has that watercolor look, but still opaque. Let me pull this down so you can see better. See? Go over here and add some more. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I know it's more just a conversation about how to use this paint, um, but it's like explaining to you the differences of how to use it two ways. So I've washed it down like a watercolor here. I put it down opaque here. As you can see, that green is now dry right here, just that little Danny green stem right here. Again, I can go in with this really light limey green because it's opaque and go on top of that. You see that? You cannot do that right there. You cannot do that with watercolor. So you have another use to use and it's a lot of fun. And it's another way to play around with paint. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for coming to my channel. I appreciate you all so much. I'm loving my YouTube followers. You guys are great. Um, your comments, and I know I'm, I hope I'm giving you some kind of joy today. I know this is a short tutorial, and it's not much in composition-wise. It's just explaining the paint to you in the only way I know how, the way I use it. And um, I know everyone's having a really hard time these days. And, Painting is good. It's a good release. It's going to help you feel a little better. Um, if you can't like go to the store and buy the paint, you can definitely order online. I actually just ordered a, a, um, a bunch of paint from and paper from Dick Blick. They're having sales where it's free shipping of so much money and whatnot. Obviously, you might have to like sanitize the items when you can bring them into your house because of this whole virus, whatever. But you can still get your supplies. There's so many ways to get them. And you know, just a fun, try a new medium. Um, like I said, don't they have student grade gouache. You don't have to get this kind. If you can afford it, great, because it's fantastic. But you should try it out. You, mixing the two, like you'll see the difference and it's fun and it's different. And everything takes time to get used to. I know everyone, people expect to get really good at watercolor, watercolor overnight. It's not gonna happen. With gouache, it's not gonna happen. With anything, it's not going to happen. It takes time. I am going to do a tutorial on my sketchbooks to show you what they were like as a high school person, what they were like now. I mean, it's hilarious. And what I do different things now. But I just want you to know that um, I'm just here for you to do some tutorials to maybe have a little joy in your day. And I thank you so much again for stopping by and have a great day.